Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in dentistry and more. Today's topic in oral surgery is mandibular nerve block techniques. So we have two techniques. The one is Gogate's technique and Vajrani Akinosi closed mouth technique. So when our IANB technique is failed or if it is not effective, we can go for this technique either Gogate's or Vajrani Akinosi technique. So let's see the procedure of both the techniques. So we'll start with Gogate's technique. So this technique was introduced by George Albert Edwards Go Gates in 1973. So it provides a sensory anesthesia to all branches of the posterior division and buccal nerve. So other names of uh, this Go Gates techniques are which is third division now block well, it is sensitizing the posterior division or the third division of mandibular nerve. So as we all know the mandibular nerve has uh, three divisions. One is from the main trunk of the nerve. Uh, before the division it gives uh, sensory innovation to muscles such as medial pterygoid, tensor tympani and tensor valley palatini. From the anterior division, we have masseteric nerve, deep temporal nerves, buccal nerves, and lateral pterygoid nerve. And the posterior division, we have auricular temporal nerve, lingual nerve, inferior alveolar nerve, and now to mylohyoid. So that is the third division or posterior division. So what are the areas anesthetized in Gauguet's technique so it is a mandibular teeth to midline and buccal mucoperiosteum anterior two-third of the tongue and floor of the oral cavity lingual soft tissues and periosteum body of mandible inferior portion of the ramus skin over zygoma posterior portion of the cheek and temporal region so these are the areas anesthetized so what are the advantages of Gauguet's technique the main advantage is it just require one injection and it has got high success rate that is 95 percentage and the aspiration rate is very low two percentage very minimal aspiration rate and fewer post injection complications so such as trismus so very low complications related to Gauguet's technique. Whereas the disadvantages, the first one is lingual and lower lip anesthesia, which might be uncomfortable for few patients because the same branch we are trying to anesthetize is also supplying this area. So it also get anesthetized lingual and lower lip. And the time of onset of anesthesia is longer. It takes 5 to 10 minutes. Whereas the INB or conventional INB is done within 3 to 4 minutes. So we need to wait for around 5 to 10 minutes, which is longer than the conventional INB. And clinical experience required to learn this technique properly because it is not an easy technique like INB. INB is also a tough technique. But again, it is more complicated compared to INB. So we need to have a good clinical experience to give this go its technique. So what are the landmarks? So you can see here the extra oral landmarks and intra oral landmarks. So extra orally, we have the lower border of tragus and corner of the mouth. And intra orally, we have 
the height of injection is established by placement of needle tip below the mesiopalatal cusp of maxillary second molar okay maxillary second molar mesiolingual cusp and the penetration of soft tissue just distal to maxillary second molar that is the intraoral landmarks so you can see in pictures here so the intraoral and extraoral landmarks and the target area so target area as you see here the lateral side of contalar neck just below the insertion of lateral pterygoid muscle so this is area where the lateral pterygoid muscle is get inserted so there is a target area an area of insertion is a mucous membrane on the mesial side of ramus now the technique the first thing is uh, a 25 to 27 gauge needle is taken 25 to 27 gauge then the patient should be in supine position for the right side if you are planning to give the right side a uh, mandibular nerve block we need to sit if the right handed person need to sit at 8 o'clock okay so he need to sit at 8 o'clock and for left side mandibular nerve block that is if you are planning to give the gogate technique on the left side of the patient the right handed dentist or right handed administrator should sit in the 10 o'clock position okay then the patient is asked to open the mouth and then the mesio palatal cusp of maxillary second molar on the right or left side is identified the insertion site of the needle will be just distal to the maxillary second molar at the level of mesio lingual cusp bring the needle to the insertion site in a plane that is parallel to an imaginary line drawn from the intertragic notch to the corner of the mouth on the same side where injection is to be given just like see in the picture and the orientation of the bevel is not important advance the needle through the soft tissue approximately 25 mm until the bone is contacted this is the neck of the contile once the bone is contacted withdraw the needle 1 mm and do aspiration then redirect the needle superiorly and reaspirate if the aspiration in two plane is negative slowly inject one cartridge of la solution over the course of 1 minute then we draw the needle make the needle safe wait for 5 to 10 minutes before commencing the dental procedure so the most common signs and symptoms subjective is tingling or numbness of the lower lip and tongue objective is no pain in felt during the dental procedure so what are the failure chances failures of this anesthesia basically is due to one is too little volume is administered or the anatomic difficulties we may not be able to properly insert at the exact precisely over that area complications uh, it can lead to hematoma or trismus now we move on to the second technique that is vezirani akinosi close mouth technique which is commonly used where patients mouth opening ability is very limited so it was introduced by joseph akinosi in 1977 joseph akinosi in 1977 so is for patients with limited mouth opening uh, due to trismus or ankylosis of the tmj so limited mouth opening inhibits the administration of this inferior alveolar nerve block or gogate technique because uh, both of these techniques uh, requires patient to open mouth widely so it has got some other names uh, such as akinosi technique tuberosity technique close mouth mandibular nerve block tuberosity technique tuberosity technique and closed mouth nerve block so the nerve anesthetized are uh, inferior alveolar mental incisive lingual and mylohyoid nerves so again the areas anesthetized are the mandibular t2 midline as you see here mandibular teeth to midline anterior to third of the tongue and floor of the oral cavity lingual soft tissues and periosteum body of mandible inferior portion of the ramus buccal mucoperiosteum and mucous membrane anterior to the mental foramen 
so the advantages are uh, it is relatively a traumatic relatively a traumatic patient need not be in a open mouth position fewer post operative complications lower aspiration rate aspiration rate is less than 10 percentage go away technique has around 2 percentage and it provides successful anesthesia whereas the disadvantages are difficult to visualize the path of needle and the depth of insertion because the patient's mouth is closed or very little opened so visualizing is a difficult part and no bony contact depth of penetration is somewhat arbitrary here we have a bony contact or bone resistance to uh, deposit our solution so potentially traumatic if the needle is too close to periosteum as we say traumatic a traumatic it has chances of traumatic if the needle is too close to periosteum so areas of insertion is soft tissue overlying the medial border of the mandibular ramus adjacent to the maxillary tuberosity at the height of mucogingival junction adjacent to maxillary third molar okay so maxillary third molar here we were seeing maxillary second molar mostly the mesiopalatal cusp and the target area soft tissue on the medial border of the ramus in the region of inferior alveolar lingual and mylohyoid nerves so you can see the pictures here the target area the target area and the needle passage how it is going and the area of insertion so the technique a 25 gauge a 25 gauge needle is preferred for this technique patient should be in supine or semi supine position for left or right uh, technique a right handed person should sit at 8 o'clock position facing the patient so he should sit at 8 o'clock position here we were sitting 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock so the landmarks first one is mucogingival junction of maxillary second or third molar maxillary tuberosity and ask the patient to occlude gently on the posterior teeth the barrel of the syringe is held parallel to the maxillary occlusal plane as you see a picture here with a needle at the level of mucogingival junction of the maxillary third molar so the bevel is directed away from the bone here the bevel orientation was not important here we are uh keeping the bevel away from bone and needle is advanced 25 mm into the tissue the tip of the needle should be lie in mid portion of the pterygo mandibular space there is no bone resistance here then we need to aspirate in two planes if both the planes is negative we deposit 1.5 to 1.8 ml in 1 minute withdraw the needle make the needle safe anesthesia of the lip and tongue are noted in 1 minute then you can begin the dental procedure after 5 minutes so the subjective signs uh, tingling and numbness of lower lip and tongue and objective there is no pain during the dental surgery so the reasons for failure of anesthesia in akinosi technique is lateral flare of the mandible needle insertion point is too low or under insertion or over insertion of the needle in all these cases it might get failed then complications uh, similarly we have hematoma trismus and facial nerve paralysis so that's all about the two techniques gogates technique and uh, vezirani akinosi technique this is uh, like a mouth open mouth technique this is a closed mouth technique so both the techniques where inb is not sufficient to give proper anesthesia we can opt either one of these depending upon the patient's mouth opening capacity so hope you understood this uh, two techniques uh, i'll come up with a, another topic in oral surgery thank you